My name is Bruno. I've been in the UK for 12 years. Uh, obviously, the reason I came to the UK is to try to have a better life with my wife, for my kids. And it's pretty much why I think everyone comes to the UK, really. I had a friend that used to live next to me in Portugal. He was already in, in the UK. He lives in Chard. <laughs> And literally, life wasn't easy in Portugal. And it did eventually, after two years of trying to convince me to come to the UK, I finally gave in and said, yeah, we'll, we'll try. Because obviously, you're always fearful to come to the unknown. And basically, I stayed within his house and everything else. He gave me his hand initially when I came to the UK and Chard was just because that's where he used to live and that's where we stayed, basically. I came to the UK with £125 in my pocket and nothing else. Me and my wife, my kids stayed behind until we managed to find somewhere you know, and some financial stability to bring him over. Um, it's, it's, very, it's a very interesting experience when you come to another country, really. You miss, you get out of your comfort zone in your own country and where you're surrounded by your friends and your family. And then you come to the unknown, which is very, very strange. Well, especially when you used to, you know, when your family is so close to you, and I've got my family in Portugal is really close. Um, but coming in with 125 quid on the pocket, it was very, very, very entertaining because that that money had to stretch for quite a long time. Fortunately enough, I managed to find a job, you know, as a mechanic, which, which is what I do. And things got a bit easier then, but, you know, it's not, it, it's very hard. It's very hard leaving everything behind and come to the unknown, um, where if no, well, you don't know anyone. You, you got to try to, you got to try to, make friends, I suppose. You gotta try, before you make friends, you gotta try to understand how the culture in the, in the country works so you can try to integrate yourself in the country. All the, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to try and succeed. What surprised me the most is the fact that the British people aren't as bad as people make out to be. That they cold, they this, they that, they're not. They just, I think they're just sceptical, that's it. Uh, because I always thought they were gonna be a bit more cold and distant and you know, although you make friends with it, there's always gonna be a certain distance between you and, and them, but it's not really. Once you, you, you get to know them really well, that's, for me, that was the biggest surprise. Uh, obviously, the surprise with <laughs> then cuisine was very funny. The first time I heard about something called, which is the national dish, obviously, fish and chips, which you think about it. In my country, it's all unknown. You, you don't fry the fish and eat with chips. That, for me, was a very entertaining experience. It's not bad, actually, it's quite good, but trying to, again, trying to new things, it's, I think is where you need to be to succeed. Independently if it's food or learning a, a new language, making friends within your surroundings, knowing what's around you and I think, that, I think that was the most weird thing 
really. Oh, and tea, tea with milk. Uh, for me, that, yeah, tea with milk was something definitely, you look at it and say, Ugh. then you try some, eh, it's not too bad, actually. <laughs> I suppose it's the language, really. The language barrier will be the most difficult thing to pass, and the culture differences as well. Because uh, it's, it's so different than the culture in this country is so different from from Portugal, from Poland, Italy, and uh, Spain, it, it, because every country has got this, its own identification through culture, really. In the beginning, yes, it was very tricky because, again, especially being in Somerset, Somerset they got their own slang, like every other job and. The mechanics do have their own slang as well. And it was very tricky. I, during a year, the first year I was, I've worked on workshops mainly, I listened. I was trying to listen to learn the thermology, the, what, what do they call specific parts, which that, I did struggle a bit with that. That's the thing I, I struggled the most, was trying to understand what do they call um, a pole joint or a clutch, or obviously, because there's, there is the, that little bit about speaking English in your own country, but then there is again when you try to apply that to your work, which in my line of work ain't easy because there's so many different parts on a vehicle. You try to learn all of the, the name of the parts and all of that is a bit complicated. The reason why I like cars is a passion that comes from a young age. Um, I, my mum used to be used to cook on a cafeteria for a big taxi company, and obviously being in Portugal and the, again the habits are different. She used to take me with her because she couldn't afford to, you know, keep me, you know, on the daycare thingy, uh, especially in the summer holidays. I used to go with her and. On the, the cafeteria used to be on the top, it was a massive garage where all the taxis used to park up, get repaired, um, you know, and then obviously they used to go up to the first floor, have, have their food, and obviously while mum was cooking, I used to hang, hang about in the workshop with the mechanics. So I, I suppose that's where the little bug for car repairing started really, was, you know, being surrounded by all those cars and the mechanics and I think that it grew from there. It, that's what I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's where it came from is being brought up in the workshop, really. Basically, so like a workshop works. You come in in the morning, open your doors, you know, put the cars out, make sure everything, you know, turn the compressor on, all this malaki, wait for the customers to come in, Come in, do all, you know, see what the customers need, do the work, bring them. Uh, you know, every day is different in a workshop. There's normally, there's not one day the same as the other. They're all different days. Uh, it's not, it's not boring, put it this way. It's challenging sometimes, but that's what I do for a living, so that's what I like to do. Come the end of the day, customers come in, pick up the cars, they're happy with it, normally. So that's it. The thing I miss more in Portugal is, is my home, really. My, my hometown, the beach, obviously the family. And it's something I think every um, every foreign person in this country sooner or later we will miss it because I've been here for 12 years I never miss it that much until maybe a year ago a year ago we start I did really start missing my home my friends my family um, not that I've ever been mistreated here, but 
eventually you will miss your home, you'll miss your friends. That's what I miss the most, really. The first thing I would say, and I think it's the most important thing to all foreign communities, all of them, is integration. Integration, I think, is my piece of advice for the 12 years I've been in. That's the secret of my success. That's why I think I own a successful business. I own my own house. And I think that is actually my advice. And I don't think there's, there is obviously other things, but integration within the British community, it's the most important thing. Try to know their culture before you judge. Try to make friends and try to enjoy the country because the country's got a lot to offer. And, but you've got to integrate, otherwise you will not be able to enjoy it.